Hey everybody, hope you had a great 4th of July break. Welcome back. Give me a quick second for our friends at Beckett Simonon. You know these guys because I keep talking about them. Here's what I don't talk about. They're really comfortable. Let me tell you a quick story. I got married in these beautiful Beckett Simonon shoes on April 20th. It was a lovely affair, and in the weeks leading up to my wedding, my now wife told me, you know, Matt, you should probably wear those shoes around a bit to break them in, right? You have to break in wedding shoes. I didn't break them in. The first time I put them on ever was two hours before I got married. I have sucky feet. It was a disaster waiting to happen, except guess what? It wasn't. It went great and they were comfortable because these dress shoes break in in 15 minutes and I had no foot pain all night. It was a miracle. I love talking about Beckett Simonon and they keep sending me boots and now I have too many boots. I'm gonna have to give away some of these boots. So watch my Instagram in July. Hit them up, the link in the description's got you. I love these boots. I love the bags they make. The leather goods are just the jam. And now, enjoy this video. What's up everybody? Welcome to another one take. I'm Zach Clapman of The Smoking Tire and today's gonna be real loud and real fun because it's C63 AMG day. I mean, this is one of one of my favorite sedan coupe wagon like cars ever made. Uh, it's in the same class as the M3, but they always had a, a sense of fun about them. Um, they make more noise. They're rowdier. They didn't handle as well, but no one really cared, and I don't really care. Uh, if you watch my review of the new C63S, um, that one has 800 horsepower. This is not as strong, but it does have the legendary 6.2 liter um, naturally aspirated V8 instead of turbo. We'll get to all of that later. Uh, but this is Evan. Evan, thank you for driving up. What's up, guys? Nobody sees my hand. I'm just gonna start going, hi. <laughs> <laughs> the internet's laughing right now. Um, Evan, you drove up in, in the heat uh, right before you started a new job. You were very nice to be like, hey man, I got two weeks of vacation. Let's try to make this happen. I appreciate it. So tell us about this car. You have, you've had it for a good amount of time. You didn't buy it brand new. I know it's got some stuff done to it. It's got some stock stuff. Yeah, I got it used. Um, fortunately, it's a CPO car, which definitely helps. It's a 2014 non-performance package car, so about 450 horsepower out of the box, um, which is plenty. It does have a Eurocharged tune uh, V7. They say it's like another 100 brake, but I, uh, I'm a little skeptical of that. Maybe 520 feels about right. Um, but yeah, it rips. It's been very reliable. It's on uh, warranty and uh, enjoy it a lot, it's a good daily. That's awesome, because sta statements that rarely go together is like, use German car, <laughs> very reliable. Yeah. Um, we all know the stigma, because it's usually true, but the reason we all buy them is because they're amazing. But there's none. There is none. We have this nice, nice aluminum, <laughs> black leather. Uh, yeah, these are a ton of fun. The quick specs are 450 horsepower, unless you get one of the performance models, like a 507 or something, they can get 480 or 507. Did that just hit you in the balls? No, not quite. Gotta do the heat on these suction cups. All right, we're... Problem may be solved, or new audio problem created. We'll see. Um, 4,000 pounds, zero to 60 in 3.7. 38. 38. 3,800 pounds, okay. With us in it. With us in it, 4,000 <laughs> pounds. Um, I don't know, there's a bunch of stuff to talk about. We're gonna get on the road and make a whole bunch of noise, and we'll try to talk over it. Because this engine is so good. You recommended Sport so Plus. you're in comfort now, which is great around town, starts in second. That's usually how, like how I warm up the car. Right. But I'd say Sport Sport Plus is a good automatic mode. I do okay. use it a bit. Um, downshifts are good, but manual is probably what I would do up here. All right, well, let's do, let's do five minutes of Sport Plus. Cool. See what it's like, and then we'll go to manual, and we'll see what that's like. Just checking the suction cup on the roof, so I don't have to pay dent for dent repair. Okay. <laughs> oh man, I'm so jealous of your engine sound. Oh, every day you hear that. Every day. One thing oh, I did with the exhaust is um, did a secondary cat delete. Um, 
a little bit more noise. You get a few more pops and bangs, but but it wasn't crazy. When like I heard you like a corner or two away when yeah. when you're on approach, but it wasn't. Uh, you know, I drove this guy's CLS that had open header and pipes, and that was like he was he was in Nevada, and I was I was like, oh, he'll be here in a couple minutes. It was ridiculous. This sounds good, and yet and inside, it's not that loud. Yeah, like, a little a little hack you can do is put down the rear seats if you want to hear a few more noises. But like that's a funny thing that when people do rear seat delete for weight, yeah, yeah. Uh, or when like if I drive with my seats down, you kind of forget that that does a lot of sound deadening. Wow, God, I'm jealous of this. Okay, uh, automatic mode. As soon as we got out of the out of the turnout, and I hit the brakes, it downshifted immediately. Like yeah. it downshifted really quick. It's very pretty smart. I mean, if we do it now, that's. That's a really fast downshift. Uh, for a long time, Mercedes was kind of known for having slow automatic transmissions that nobody liked, and I think that was valid. And then they went to the seven-speed auto, and then this car, um, let's see. They made, this, they made this generation of C63 starting in 08, and it started as a sedan and a wagon, and that had a seven-speed auto. And then when they did a facelift in 2011, they also added a coupe and it got the seven speed from the uh, SL63. And that came with their MCT, which is a, a wet clutch that helps them launch harder from a start. And also sped up shifts a lot, and then you got the four driving modes, which the, uh, the old one did not have. Man, this is just, everyone should own, no, maybe everyone should own a C63, but God, everyone should drive one of these for a little while. They should experience this motor at least. I mean, they should. It's a, it's a dying breed. Yeah, well, it is, right? It's it's naturally aspirated, pig bore. Oh, so good. Brakes, uh, six piston. You said. Yep. Brakes are very In the good. Front, I like. The rear. They got good feel, you know. I, I was thinking about doing like stainless lines. That usually always helps. It does um, it does. What we were talking about before we started rolling is, uh, it's, you know, cars aren't made, even a performance car doesn't come out of the box ready for like hard track or canyon work. Tunnel though? Tunnel, you can do a tunnel. Here's what's great about this car. <laughs> tunnel at five miles an hour, totally fine. That was- Never gets old. That was under the speed limit, doesn't get old. All the, all the other cars I drive up here, it's like full throttle, especially mine. Inline six, inline sixes sound like nothing. I mean, I don't know. I, I respect them. If I hear a Supra, I'm like, oh, it's a Supra. I like that car, so I kind of like the sound. But this, you could play like a CD or, well, it, remember CDs, kids? Oh, that's, that's where we used to play music in my day. Uh, they just sound so good. I'm gonna do it. Oh, well, I'm gonna go in front of this truck. That, that never gets old. Nothing no. about it. This is why I, AMGs, they, they could underperform on a track compared to the M3. I mean, they were heavier than the M3. They made a lot more power than the, you know, the E92 or the, the following generation. But, you know, they were a little behind on the racetrack, but it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Man, it is so quiet in here. It's like, kind of don't know how fast you're going. Yeah, it's pretty refined. It's pretty darn refined. Uh, not many creaks or rattles. You said you've had like a few little things come loose for the interior. You know, uh, the coupes in the US all came with glass roofs, which is like cool. But the first thing I had to do was like limo ceramic tin. And the second thing I had to do was replace the seals because it was creaking a lot. And then there's like a really annoying creak that happens like when it's cold in the back from like the rear seat belt. But it's, there are worse things in the world. There are worse things, that's that's pretty good. You, uh, it's definitely quieter in here than, than my my car, which I, that's not a great comparison because my car is actually 10 years older. Um, okay, so at, at full throttle, we're in manual mode now. At full throttle, the shifts have like a little hesitation compared to a dual clutch. It actually seemed like when it was in Sport Plus at three quarters, it shifted quicker. Like it, That's, it could totally be possible. And also like this tune does change up the shifts a little bit. I feel like the, the shifts are a little less refined, but they do feel faster. Yeah. Um, and I think like Matt has said this in the past, but there's like a delay between 
pushing the paddle and it actually shifting up. Absolutely. The shift itself is fast. Uh, I would or agree with that. Fast. I would agree. I think for the times the shift is fast uh, when these came out, there definitely is a, a half second yeah. or for sure where you like hit the button or hit the paddle and it's like <laughs> boom. Um, steering feel pretty darn good. Uh, it's got good weight to it. Hydraulic. Hydraulic. Yep. Feels pretty good. Racks quick. Oh, thank you, person. They could hear us coming. They could hear this thing. <laughs> They're like, we do not want to be in the way of that because that is a very angry, drunk person. <laughs> We're not drunk, but this car just sounds like sounds someone like walks in the door. Ah! Yeah, the... Uh, I was trying to think, like, this engine, the super responsive 6.2, we're gonna go past this because we're we're not done. You know the, the M3 at the time, either either the the four liter V8, which this is 50 percent bigger than, and you know quote only made 30 more horsepower with while you get it tuned for it. Like it's kind of funny that it's 50 percent bigger than the M3 engine. Doesn't make that much power, but there's power everywhere and there's torque everywhere. You don't have to rev it to like seven. I think the thing to remember with these motors though is like. In, in a like base E63 at the time, they made like 505 horsepower. Yeah. And so they detune these a lot when they put in this application because I think people are like, uh, the engineers must have, must have thought like, um, people are going to be hoonigans with this thing. In you, you can't have, uh, you know, you can't have all the models have the exact same, I mean, power. Yeah. Like nowadays, with them, right? everything shares a four liter V8 but there's a little variation in the power depending on the model. But I mean, the point is these are pretty indestructible. The earlier ones did have like a head bolt issue. Yeah, ex explain that, you know, cause this is, a, this is the hand built engine generation. We've got a name on the front, which is like Giuseppe something Giuseppe. Giuseppe de Giuseppe. Giuseppe de Giuseppe. Of course. Which is amazing. Uh, very common German name, I, of we're course. We're Facebook friends. Um, it's a pretty cool dude. How old is he? Uh, I think he's in his uh, 60s now. That's what I wanted to hear. I wanted to hear old Italian guy. He's got the white hair and the wisdom. Yeah. And uh, just knows how to big, build big, loud things. Um, so head bolts. Yeah. Let's talk about that. I'm not an expert in this, but I think it's pre-2011. Uh, from what I understand, like the threading wasn't deep enough in the head bolts. And it's one... I remember reading an article actually several years ago about a guy who had an R63, which is that weird minivan. Oh, yeah. Those that cool. AMG made. And... The head bolts went, and it was literally like a $30,000 repair, and those things aren't exactly worth anything. No, they're um, rare and cool, but they're not worth a lot yeah, of money. no. Anyways, uh, replacing that, uh, or just, the fix to it is you do preventative, like a three, two to $3,000 preventative uh, repair where you just replace the head bolts. Um, before they back out on you. Before they, before they back <laughs> out and your heads leave. Uh, or you leave them at home by accident. Which is when kind you of a drive hilarious way for a motor to fail. Um, you know, like I had an STI before this, the pistons uh, went on me. I think it's a hilarious way for an engine to fail if it's not your engine. <laughs> exactly. You're like, that's hilarious, man. It's like, well, sort of. I mean, it's like a, it's a funny mistake. They're, well, they're like, oh, we didn't drill these holes. Listen, it's different than like rod bearings, right? Right. Where those motors are just uh, E92 M3s, that is are just eating themselves alive all day long and uh yeah this is just like they didn't tighten it down quite enough yeah the wrong spec bolt whatever and after 2011 it's kind of a non-issue but it's definitely something like to look out for if you're interested in like a used one because they're they're getting really cheap they are so uh auto tempest i went and did a search yeah um saw them as low as mid to upper 20s if there were miles on them, those were usually like 2011s, 2012s. And then the upper end was the 507, much rarer car, most, you know, the most power, the limited slip diff, like you said. Uh, and that was, they were asking upper 60s. I don't know if they're getting it, but they're asking it. This thing corners, by the way, very flat. Uh, seems very, ad well, I was gonna say agile. I meant, um, it's got a lot of grip. Yeah, I think the coupes, they did some tighter sway bars. They did. Like, that's not even a thing for these cars. You don't get aftermarket sway bars. I think it would be really interesting to put, like, KWs on this car. Like, because just yes. no one does it. Um, yeah, when we came on, this road's uh, noticeably bumpier yeah, and cracked up, bumpy. which I like to do because now we can go, okay, what's the what's the audio or what's the NVH in this car now over some broken a concrete? A little noisier. You can feel... 
it's a stiff chassis. It's got kind of stiff suspension. Um, I definitely wouldn't do sway bars. It handles no, the corners really they're, flat. They're literally, they don't exist. You, there are none after, no aftermarket sway bars. For this Everyone's car. like, look, these things drift enough. We yeah, don't need to like, stiffen need. up the lean. But the, man, these are just fun. Modern hot rod, you know, luxury hot rod. I always joke about how like this particular car doesn't have an LSD. I think that's something to do. Um, yes. That but, would, I mean, it's a safety feature not having it at this point. Yeah, um, as you were saying uh, on the drive up, up I'm here. I'm not like... the best driver in the world, but putting 520 horsepower down to the wheels in a short wheel base car is uh, a bit scary. Yeah, it's because the torque is fairly instant. Yeah. You know, I'm uh, like, if this was music, the M3, whether it's the turbo or, or the E92, is like, it builds, it builds, it builds, it builds, and then crescendo, and the horsepower is there. And this is just like, you turn the stereo on, and you forgot you left it at full, and it's just like, <laughs> ah, ah, you know, it's, it's just, you just breathe on the gas. Uh, it, it's like, like you, if you're making salsa and you're chopping jalapenos, and you touch your eye, oh, okay. it doesn't matter if you chop 10 or one, like, your eye is gonna be on fire and it's gonna be very painful. This is like this much throttle or this much. You you can feel the urgency in it. You can feel the torque. <clears throat> um, very linear and then of course the sound is amazing. I'm so, like, I really like these. This would be such a fun daily. Um, it would be, it's it's such a good daily. I mean, it's got plenty of sporting character. You know, it's not like the best track car, but. I didn't get it as a track car. Yeah, you got to have fun. Uh, miles per gallon fun. is fun. Should we see how we did? Oh yeah, that'll be absolutely very telling. So, see how we do. Our range is eleven. Uh, Ten nine. No, eleven for today. Eleven miles per gallon for today, and some of which you spent on the highway. <laughs> <laughs> Man, yep. it's so. But it's so good. Like ergonomics are great. I think. The, I think the gauges are timeless. The steering wheel looks really nice. You know, brushed aluminum. This wheel is much better than uh, the E92 M3s with like the giant bottom spoke. Th it's nice to have the telephone buttons. I don't know what they're for. Like you can teach math while you drive, uh, I guess. I use that for radio presets, I guess. Okay, that's that's much more helpful. Um, yeah, this this whole section is like nice looking, but it, it, yeah, feels, it feels a little outdated. But it, I think everything else could age pretty well. I don't know, man. Back seats, a lot of noise, drift machine, heavy, fun, who like, these are cool cars. So these again. are cool. They're they're these are these are gonna go down in the history books. It's like everyone was a fan. How could you not be? So um, I, I'm I can just keep driving and keep talking because this is such a fun, great car that connects muscle cars and like luxury automobiles. And that's that's what AMG does. Now they're getting like more sporting and better better handling. But for a long time, that was their bread and butter, and there was nothing wrong with that at all. Yeah, I mean, I, this is probably the first car that they made that had some handling pedigree. Um, yeah, but, this black, the black series. Yeah, because yeah. the E55 before. This, I guess like CLK black series. That was the start, yeah. I think. Um, but for a long time, they were just like, oh, let, you know what? Let let BMW just be the ultimate drive, drive machine. Like, let's just have a good time. Exactly. Do a good job. Well, thank you so no so problem, much for driving up here on a very warm day, man. Um, this is great. I'm jealous. I'm genuinely jealous. <laughs> just, you just... Like that. That is more fun than almost anything about my car unless I'm driving really quick. It really, really is. Visibility is not as good because you have so much engine, but... Yeah. Ugh. I'm jealous. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching. Um, keep your eye out for the podcast. Check out our shirts on blipshift.com slash TST. We got new shirts like every two weeks. Comfortable, funny, soft, limited edition stuff. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Dude, this car, that was like, that felt like two minutes and it was 20. Really? Yep. No That was way. 20 minutes.